Okay, I don't think anyone more is coming, so 10 a.m. we can start. Hi everyone. The topic, thank you for coming to my presentation. The topic of today's talk is blockchain. The blockchain is a new solution, but it is not new in terms that the, the building blocks of it come from the many fields like mathematics, cryptography, computer science, and it is a new solution in the way that those building blocks that were invented over the last past few decades uh, are used in a novel way to provide certain class of guarantees, certain properties that are very interesting for the, for the problem that, that they solve. My name is Tomasz Kowalczyk. I'm working in this industry for more than, te more than 10 years now. Uh, I'm interested in virtually any kind of complex uh, solutions requ requiring uh, specific knowledge, so blockchain comes in handy. And right now I'm working uh, as a software architect in a British financial company called IFX, and we are solving many kinds of interesting financial problems from, from financial domain. So if it is interesting, please, please come talk to me after, after the talk. I will be happy to answer your questions. Before we will delve inside the inner workings of blockchain, let's first establish some common grounds, some common definitions that we will use later, later in this presentation. So first of all, blockchain is uh, nothing more and nothing less than a database. And when you usually think about database, you, s you think about products like MySQL or Postgres, the relational databases with schemas, tables, fields, rows, and mm, maybe some of you uh, were using uh, NoSQL databases, maybe document ones like MongoDB. The blockchain, the blockchain's name isn't disconnected from the way it, it is built because it is basically a chain of blocks. And why chain? Why blocks? The chain because every next block in the chain, this is a sequential, so hence the name chain. Uh, needs to reference the previous one. That's the way the integrity of the data is, is preserved. And where things get interesting is the block thing, because block can, can contain virtually any kind of data. Of course, you may, you may say that uh, any kind of database can, can contain any kind of data, but in the case of blockchain, the block is the most interesting structure because the block is something that you as an implementer design. So whenever you're designing a, a blockchain, whenever you're implementing it, you're basically designing it for your own needs. So there is nothing like uh, the reference blockchain or the reference, reference implementation. You, as an implementer design, and you, as an implementer, decide what properties you have and what measures you will use to actually achieve it. Achieve it. it is impossible to talk about blockchain without mentioning its most prominent usage right now, the, the cryptocurrencies. But I want, you, I want to assure you that we are not here to talk about Bitcoin, we are not here to talk about other cryptocurrencies. Of course, there will be mentioned examples uh, for, from their solutions, but we are not here to talk about cryptocurrencies. We are here to talk about the general purpose blockchain, so how the blockchain as a structure, as a data structure, as a solution, technical solution, can help you. How blockchain as a, oh, much better. Uh, how blockchain as a data structure, how blockchain as a technical solution can, can help you your own, uh, solve your own problem. So whichever company you come from, whichever industry you work in, the blockchain may help you solve your solution if you understand well when and where it can be useful. So why would you use blockchain in the first place? What properties does it guarantee? What properties does it have? What traits can, can, can it achieve using a spe specific te technical solutions? F first of all, the immutability. Every data that goes inside blocks is immutable. It can't be changed. There are, s there are cer certain, specific, uh, certain technical measures uh, taken into the account to provide the immutability property such as every data is, for example, hashed, and 
not only all the information inside the block is hashed, also the, all, all those hashes of those hashes are also hashed, so, so that even if you change a tiny bit of a single operation inside a single block, the whole hash chain will be invalidated, and in, in, in turn, the whole block will be rejected because it, those signatures won't match. So if it's a database and it's immutable, what, what is the useful for, for such, such database? I mean, we, are, we need to change data. Uh, that's what the database are for. So the way you are changing data inside blockchain is by appending new blocks. So if you introduce some piece of information inside a single block, let's say you create a new user account, the most basic example. If you want to change that user data, you need to reference the operation from the b previous block and put your changes inside it. So wh which, uh, whichever structure will be, will it be a JSON message, will, will it be an X XML, XML file or something, you need to pr uh, first provide all the data inside the first block and then you just reference that block and say okay this data will have now these changes and by uh, this uh, property that we are always appending the information ins inside the, inside the, the blockchain we have also another property the traceability whenever you are build building another uh, some reporting systems the auditing systems you you have it like built in inside, inside blockchain because it stores every kind of operation every kind of state change is in, inside the system so this is by design there, there, are, there is nothing more that you need to do because blockchain just contains it because all the data is hashed and you you have hashes for for virtually everywhere and maybe even cryptographic cryptographic signatures you have a property of verifiability because you are ab able to verify all the all the sources that the data came from and the inner structure of, of it because you are able to verify and the data can't change you can say that the blockchain as a structure is simply tamper proof because of course if you have the, the direct access to the files that the blockchain is uh, is stored in you can of course change the data but if you then try to recompute all the changes and restore the, the the state of the whole application you simply won't be able to do so because the application that you will write will reject the specific block because its signature simply won't won't match so you at any point in time can can tell whether the data is authentic or or it is not all those properties taken into account together provide that the blockchain is a perfect structure to preserving data integrity. It is by design, the, the, the integrity is by design the most interesting uh, property of the blockchain because everything works toward uh, the data be, being completely inspectable and, and verifiable. Since you, are, you have all uh, the information inside the chain and there is now information outside it, you can also have a, a property of reproducibility because you are able to reproduce any kind of any kind of state at any given point in time. If you want to have your system to inspect how your system worked, let's say a year ago, you just need to find the block that you uh, put at some specific point in time and replay all the blocks from the beginning up to the, the certain point, and you will have you will be certain that the system will be in the same state that it was a, a year ago in when that block was put inside inside the chain since no none of these operations require any external knowledge any external authority you can say that blockchain is a perfect solution to build a decentralized uh, decentralized applications because you uh, need so blockchain is perfectly suited to building decentralized applications because you can conduct all those operations regardless of where we are going. There is no information outside it that is required to verify, to replay the data and being certain that the, oper that the data is authentic and the data wasn't in any way changed. This, in case, brings us to the biggest advantage of what blockchain can provide. The blockchain can effectively remove any kind of trust from your system. You don't need any kind of, of uh, centralized authority, any kind of institution, user, the CEO, the government or something 
you are relying on the mathematics and cryptography to be certain that everything that was put inside the blockchain is actually the authentic data. And since we are here uh, talking about properties of, of it, there, I must also mention that uh, the transparency of the data is not something that blockchain will dictate for you. So if you want to store your data in the plain text, you are free to do so. If you want to encrypt your data, you are also free to do so because everything that, that blockchain cares about are, are those hashes and the structure that, that is able to preserve the, the guarantees that I have just described. So what if we now know that blockchain, blockchain has certain properties, when and where can it be used? And the answer is virtually everywhere. I don't intend you to read all those examples, but let's talk about some, some of them. Let's say voting. If you have a tamper-proof authentic records of who voted when, and you, you have a guarantee that no one vote, voted twice, and every vote can be, can be counted in like the authentic way, you have, you have a perfect solution for guaranteeing that voting wasn't in, in some way rigged on, or no one lied ab about, uh, about, about things uh, that, that, that were counted. If you have medical records, let's, uh, I heard about one company that is trying to build the blockchain in a way that only the patient and the medical institution is able to read, read the, the data. So let's say you have the public blockchain with all those medical data recorded in it and no one from, uh, apart from, from the patient and the authorized, uh, authorized medical institution, let's say hospital, is able to read it. But then you have financial transactions, a no-brainer, and insurance, digital wallets, crowdfunding, the virtual countries even. They store they, their laws, their, their, their personal structures and, and so on because uh, virtual countries are, are something uh, that, that is also booming inside, inside the internet, and they are also they are also using blockchain to, to provide the authenticity of, of, of their data. I could talk on and on about it, but really there are many many examples of where people are using blockchain. So close your eyes, think think about some company that you know, and someone is probably doing the, the, the same thing, but with blockchain. I encourage you to read about it because what people are trying to come up with is really, really impressive. So now that we know what are the properties and when can it can be used, so what are the challenges, what are the decisions that you need to make, what things do you need to be aware about when you are designing your own? So first of all, you have three major types of, of blockchains. The public one is just like in the cryptocurrencies. Anyone can download the blockchain, anyone can inspect it, anyone can deconstruct it, anyone can verify it. You need to provide the most, uh, most uh, sophisticated security measures because if anyone is able to access it, then anyone is, able, is also able to break it. So you need the finest grade of cryptography, the finest grade of security to protect it. On the other hand, you have a private blockchain in which you are the only entity controlling, controlling it. Let's say that it, it's your personal blockchain, it's your company blockchain, it's the blockchain for, I don't, I don't know, something that, you only, something that you only control. You don't need, maybe need, need any kind of, of those security measures because you can, for example, put all the application in, in the computer disconnected from the internet or behind a firewall or something. This is the exact opposite in the case that you can provide as much or as little security as you want. Things get interested when you, interesting when you consider the shared blockchain because in the shared one you have a, a limited set of parties involved in, 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 inside the, uh, the workings of, of your network and you can, you can negotiate how much security you want, how much checks you want. Basically, it's totally up to the parties involved. If you want to share some data between departments of your, of your company, if there are some companies that would want to uh, form some joint venture and want some rules put, put there in place, you can, of course, do it how, however you want. So the public blockchain mu must have the most, uh, most uh, security, the private blockchain can, ha can have none, the shared can have basically ho ho uh, however you, you want to do it. And then the cryptography, the most important part. Because, because you won't be relying on, this, on, any central, on any kind of central authority, you need to have the finest grade of, of cryptography in place. 
the cryptocurrencies usually use the for the specific purposes, uh, specific properties that it's able to to provide. They are using the elliptic curve cryptography. It has several properties that are very interesting. First of all, they provide the same level of security as the regular RSA keys, but with the much shorter, much shorter ones. So you are even able to write uh, all the all those keys even you know, even on a paper because they are that, that, that short. They can be, for example, if, if maybe even if remember if if someone is up to it. So you need the finest grade cryptography because you will uh, you will generate signatures uh, for for your data and you will verify them using the same cryptographical primitives. So you can't just uh, you, you can't just uh, take the the, the first uh, hashing function or, or the first security function that you find on the internet and put put it inside your code because probably it is not secure. Someone will break it and in turn he will break your own blockchain. The other property of the elliptic curve cryptography is that you can you can have virtually infinite amount of public keys from a single private key. So you can generate as many addresses that, that you want for your users because if you are going to at some point uh, integrate in your system the any way to for messaging using between them. So in the case of cryptocurrencies, of course, this involves only sending transactions. But if you want to build a messaging system, if you want to build any kind of any kind actually any kind of a messaging system between users, regardless of what those messages will contain, you need uh, your users to be able to reference themselves, and the addresses generated from the public keys are the most common way of achieving it. And since you will be also protecting the integrity of your data inside the blocks using hashes, you need to contain you need to choose a, a very secure hashing algorithm. Usually the SHA-256 is used, and I am not aware about any even theoretical attack on it, so you can, you can take my advice that it is currently secure as of, as of today, but please get someone that knows about security to tell you what key scheme, what uh, hash algorithm you, you will use, because it is very important. Someone is able to generate duplicates, if someone's able to generate any kind of collision for your, for your uh, hash function, then your blockchain will not be as secure as you need it to be. When I told you at the beginning that the blockchain, the blockchain blocks are the data structure that you design, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, really sincere with you. I, I haven't lied, but still, the Merkle tree is a structure that is commonly used for storing the data inside blocks because it provides for certain, uh, uh, certain interesting properties. The Merkle tree is also known as the binary hash tree, named after Ralph Merkle, who invent, in, invented them. And the Merkle trees are constructed in a way that let's, for example, consider the four pieces of information, A, B, C, and D. You hash all those, all, 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 all those informations, and you have hashes, H, A, H, B, H, C, and H, D. And then you are able to construct a binary hash tree by, by simply there is a property that every node can have as, as at, at most two children, and you just construct the tree by hashing the hashes up to the R, R element, which is in this case called Merkle root, and then the Merkle root is simply the ultimate hash that uh, will be probably the hash of, of, your, of your whole block. And there is also an interesting property called Merkle path, because if you want to test if the element is stored ins inside, inside that tree, you just need to provide the path. Uh, here you have example for the Merkle path for element B. You need to provide hashes R, A, H, B, and H, B, and then the data structure can effectively and efficiently tell, tell you if this element is stored inside. So if your data is predictable, you could, pr you could calculate those hashes without actually inspecting the block and efficiently will tell whether the element is contained inside the block without traversing all the information in inside it. The genesis block is also an important part of, of, of the blockchain because if you, you have heard from me that every new block references the previous one, but if the blockchain is empty, what, what the first block references? There is no zero hash or something, but you generate the genesis block for the, from the arbitrary data that only you decide while designing the blockchain, 
For example, Bitcoin contains a header from, from the New York Times, uh, New York Times Journal with the header from, from, from the day that it was, that it was created. So it is the, an arbitrary data that you choose uh, and you put it both inside the source code of the application that you're writing and the chain and all the, the blocks that contain the actual information inside the chain, uh, the first block that will be actually created will reference the genesis block. So the blockchain is not empty at all. It always contains at least the genesis block. And since you will build probably a decentralized system, you, you need to have a conflict resolution mechanism in place. And they are called the consensus algorithms. So whenever there will be any conflict from, with the data in the, in the system, you need to have an algorithmic way to resolve those conflicts. You won't have, uh, let, me, let me repeat it, that you won't have any central authority, any kind of node, any kind of CEO to tell you, okay, this data is, is correct and this is not. You need to have an algorithmic way of resolving it. To, res to mention the example from the crypto cryptocurrency world, for example, in Bitcoin, when you want to resolve the, the conflict, the rule is that the longest chain always wins. So you, if you have transactions confirmed uh, in one block and in, in the other, and the one contains more blocks than, than the other, then the other is simply dropped. Th those things simply didn't happen. They need to be recomputed and put on top of the chain that would simply won. And since uh, you will run your application in the decentralized uh, manner, you also need to, a way to prevent uh, possible attackers from uh, putting as much data and clogging the network. And here, where the proofs, proof algorithms come, come in. Because there are two most popular, but there, there are many more of them. First of all, the most, the, the most popular one is, is the proof of work. The proof of work was, works, uh, works the way that you need to calculate hash, but that hash but must, must have specific properties in it. In the case of Bitcoin, that hash must have a specific amount of zeros at the, at the beginning. So how, how it is done? You take the transactions from the, from the Bitcoin network, you obviously need to put the, block, uh, the previous block, block's hash in, 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 inside, inside your block, but then you, you just get one hash because the data is stuck. So you take also a value, a value called nonce and you generate it randomly up to the point that, up to the point that uh, the hash matches the requirements, contains required amounts of, amount of zeros. Because this is uh, very computation, computationally uh, ineffective, there are also others, such as proof of stake, which is gaining popularity. Proof of stake works in the way that from the, all the nodes that contains the most value to the network, in the case of cryptocurrencies, this is the, the nodes, the addresses, the computers that uh, hold the most token value, the most coins, one of them is chosen in the predictable and deterministic way, and it is allowed to, co to confirm the block in inside the network. So it just generates, generates a hash, and, and everyone will, will, will verify and compute on their own nodes that yes, this one was chosen, and this one confirmed it. So it is very computationally, uh, computationally effective, but still it comes with its, the, their own problems, which uh, are outside of the scope of, of, of this talk. When I told you about that nonce value and generating, and generating the hash with the specific properties, this is called mining. So if you have ever wondered what the Bitcoin mining means, it means just generating this random nonce up to the point that, mm, that the hash will have those specific properties, the, the uh, amount of zeros at the beginning. The blockchain doesn't also need to necessarily to store the static data. In the case of Ethereum, another cryptocurrency out there, there is a language called Solidity, and the programs in it can be stored within the transactions to be able to actually be run once something happens with the transaction. So if you, for example, want to block the, tra the, the funds of trans uh, transfer of funds uh, up to the point that some property is matched, some specific external, a specific external uh, trade is, is matched, you can simply write a program to do that. And that program will be run on the virtual machine that is provided by Ethereum software. So not only static data, but also programs and other things that you could pro possibly imagine. So now that we know what things can, can be built, what tools can be used, and uh, when can, they can, can be used, let's see some simple examples that, that I prepared to, to show you how it
could possibly work in, in a simple manner. So since the, uh, it won't be possible to show the perfect blockchain with the, the, the decentralized uh, application, I chose the hash chain, which is just a data structure that maintain, maintains the guarantees for, for, from, from blockchain. So here you have some code and you see that there are four, four uh, dependencies. The storage in which you, we, will, uh, we will store the blocks, the signer that will pro pro provide the, uh, the cryptographic primitives that we, that we need, Even the event dispatcher that we will use to, uh, to operate on the data when, when it will be put inside, inside the blockchain, and the genesis block with, as I said, the arbitrary data that I have, uh, that I have chose, chose myself. So we create new hash chain with all those dependencies, and then we can, we can see what happens. So the first example, as, as the, the simple one, the transactions. As we, you see, I made myself a helper function to create the block with a sim single operation. And then you see that I can put the block with, with the operation of, of creating account A, creating account Z with uh, 1,000 credits, and send it, sending those credits from Z to A to, uh, to 100. This example is very simple and it is a, a happy path. But what could happen if someone tried to actually malform the data or uh, try to claim the benefits that didn't belong to them? So if, for example, uh, Z then tries to send to A 1,000 uh, credits, it, wo he, it won't be able because it doesn't contain uh, them anymore. So whenever the block is processed, the read model of the application is updated and before putting and validating the, block, the blockchain, it is, it is simply validated and either accepted or rejected. So if you, uh, if you at your computer will try to claim the benefits that you don't have, such as sending more credits that, that, you, that you actually have, of course you can do that on your own computer because you can control the programs that run on it. But whenever you will try to send that block to any other, they will verify that, of course, you're trying to put the operation inside the chain and all the hashes match, but the actual process does not match because you don't hold the, the amount of value that is required to, 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 to process it. And the simple examples of when you try to send the, uh, send the credits from the, from the sender that does not exist or try to create a duplicate account, the same rule applies. You can do it on your own computer, you can put the, the block on your own computer, but whenever you will send that block to the network and anyone will try to apply it, they simply will reject it because it is, it is invalid. And of course, you don't need to put a single operation inside the block because that, that, that's a little inefficient, but and the operations doesn't, do not need to be pro processed in a sequential way because basically, if you want to process them uh, out of order, you can do so. You can uh, send credits to, from E to D, but E is created in the next operation, so we can both reject and tell that we are processing this in the, in the ordinal way, but uh, you can also process the create accounts first and then, then send credits. It's completely up to you. How will you implement your own block, uh, Bitcoin application? Here we have also a generic application, a generic example, in which we will just manage some entries and as you see, we have events that listen for the block created event. And whenever uh, the block is processed, is added to the chain. If the entry is, 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 has an instance of new entity entry that we are adding here, we are, will just insert entry inside the database. And of course, if we have more of them, such as updating entries or removing entries, of course, we can do it the same way and insert, update, and, and, re and remove them. Also, the, the example, of, I, I tried to, to think hard about the possible applications that, that, that could be done, I mean, in the to totally not, not uh, common way. So I thought about the game of chess. And as with the game of chess, you probably all know uh, what, what are the rules. But here we have the SQLite storage for, for blocks, the connection to the other computer, and the Genesis block with the description who, who is playing uh, versus who. You just create a chess chain, and then the, the pieces start, start moving. You are, here is the four nights game, the, the common opening, and you, you can see that six moves were made. And this is the state, state of, of the board. When, as you see, there is, a, there is a horse there, 
And if you try to make a move that is illegal, such as moving the knight inside the same place, of course, you can do it on your old computer. But when, when you will send that operation to, to, to over, the net, over the network to the, to the person that you are playing with, that operation will be rejected. And it will, will be up to, the, up to the application to tell you whether this operation was legal or was not. And if the, if the program will just display the, the big red button, the big red text cheater, or it will just resume and just not, 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 not allow this kind, this kind of move. So this, this word is the simple example that I have prepared. And uh, not everything is unique or in Paris. Not everything is, uh, is, is always, the, shot, the sun doesn't always shine in the blockchain world. There, there, there are some challenges that, that, need to, that we need to have in mind whenever we are trying to design and implement such system. So the first challenge, the simply most important, I, I'd say, is the fault tolerance and the uh, conflict resolution. So that's what I have said about the consensus algorithm. The failures will happen, the network failures, the disagreement between nodes, they simply will happen. When you design the blockchain solution, you need to, to, to have that in mind. You need to actually provide an algorithm way of resolving them. Regardless of how simple or how complex it will be, or will you use some consensus algorithm like, like Paxos or, or RAF, it is completely up to you, but you need to be sure that whatever can happen in your system will be resolved, because there will be no central authority to help you. Integration of existing systems is also a challenge, because not every system is prepared to be restored from the events, no every system works in, in, in that way. Some systems have the modification of the data in place is so ingrained in, in it that maybe blockchain is not suitable for integration of them because they will simply won't, won't work like that. The blockchain may, may, may uh, for example, exist outside it or uh, as a side application for, for such a legacy solution, but still integration of the existing application can, can be potentially hard. The security. As I said, the cryptography is the basic building block, so simply this can't be done wrong. If you do your security wrong, then the blockchain will simply not be secure. It won't be useless, but still it won't be secure. So uh, if you have a public blockchain, anyone will be able to break it, will put the malicious information inside them or claim benefits that they, that they don't have. So you need to simply consider the security as the most important part, the first part that you're going to actually decide on. The performance, the scalability, the throughput. The Bitcoin uh, network right now can process, as far as I remember, the seven trans transactions per second. It isn't even close to being impressive. And if uh, Bitcoin is trying to ever become a global payment system, it needs just to, to do better. There are solutions like Lightning Network. There are solutions like segre Segregated Witness. I won't ex explain them here, but they are trying to simply improve the, the throughput of the, of the network. You need to know those solutions. You need to decide what performance do you expect and simply know that blockchain, first and foremost, is built for the, for the security, for the integrity of the data. Performance comes second. So if you need to think about the, 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 the performance just after you sort out your, your security, your cryptography problems. And also, if you're building a public blockchain, you will probably encourage people to run the nodes of your system because the more nodes, the more copies of the blockchain out there, the more, the more security is because the more network can reject the invite operation. And you need to think about the incentives of, for people that, that will do so. People have servers, they have computers, the computers cost money, the, the, uh, the current power costs money, so they, they need to have something for, for that. And in the case of cryptocurrencies, they are usually rewarded, there are the block rewards for putting block inside the chain. In case of Bitcoin, it was in, in works in the way that every transaction needs to reference some transactions in which the money was given. So if you want to spend, spend Bitcoin, you need to reference the transaction in which you have, uh, you have uh, received it. And there is also a possibility to put some transactions without inputs, so-called inputs, and those transactions are, are the reward. So you are able to claim 
certain amount of, of, the, of the rewards from the system whenever you successfully put, put the block uh, inside the chain. Also the privacy. Whether your users are going to be identifiable from, from the data stored in, in the chain or not is com completely up to you, but also you need to consider it. As I said previously, uh, when you use the elliptic curve cryptography, you can have as much uh, uh, public addresses as you want. So, for example, your system could generate the other public key for any other operation, but still, this is something that you need to have in mind. You need to actually implement it. It won't, it won't come, come uh, to you uh, automatically. The access, especially if you're, if you're uh, uh, designing the shared or private blockchain. If you have a private blockchain, it is stored in a single place without any like copies or any kind of decentralization, you are susceptible to an attack in which you could just access your server and tamper some, some data, regenerate the blockchain. It won't be simply to secure the flag. Also, the hard fork. When, whenever uh, the rules are, ch are changing, someone, uh, someone who will probably make it so that he doesn't like your rules. That's gross. Someone, uh, someone could decide that they don't want your rules that you have put in place. They want different rules. So that's that's the where hard force happen. They just take your blockchain and modify the application so that so that it works in a different way. You need to be to be prepared for it because, for example, inside in, in, in when the when the Bitcoin uh, hard fork happens, there was a problem whether the addresses from the new new network whether they will be valid is inside the, inside the new network. So uh, you simply need to be aware of it that hard calls, especially in the public blockchain, can happen and probably will happen when the network gains uh, new, uh, gains new, gains popularity, gains new uh, users. So this is something to have in mind also and some, something that will need to be, to be taken care of. Also, network security. In the case of proof of work, as I said, every uh, node needs to pro 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 proceed with the very compute computationally expensive operation to put the block inside the chain. But what happens when someone gets the the, net uh, the network majority, the majority of the of the computing power of the net network? It is able to basically centralize the control about blockchain. So. You will also need to think, if you are uh, designing the public blockchain, to think about it, what will happen and what will be the probable, probable countermeasures against that. And also, I just want, wanted to show you one example that there are also solutions like blockchain that, pro 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 that uh, provide similar guarantees, but they are not blockchains per se. So there is something called IOTA Tangle, and IOTA is a, uh, is a cryptocurrency. Tangle is the solution behind it. So the Tangle is basically a graph of operations. If you want to put the new operation on the system, the new information inside it, you don't mind the new block. You don't uh, need to be, uh, you don't need to hold the stake to, to be chosen in the proof of stake algorithm. You just need to uh, reference at least to other pieces of information from, from, from the graph, in case, uh, in turn, valid validating them, and uh, the more operations are validated, are referenced by others, the more, the more valid they, they are. So, to summarize, the blockchain is the right solution for the right kind of problem. And I, uh, I don't want to sound like, like you that I am a proponent of blockchain for everything. I'm not. The, 
if you have the, the need for the properties that I, I have described at the beginning of, of, of this talk, then you may probably need blockchain. But you need to consider the, the pros and the cons. And before you are applying the blockchain, you need to know that it is uh, simply a, a one-way street. Because once you will generate the blockchain, you just, you, you just have it. You, just, you, you can just operate on top of it. You can just, in place, change something without regenerating the whole chain and probably restoring, uh, making a hard fork and telling, OK, guys, let's drop the chain. This is the new one, the better one. Because in the decentralized network, no one will believe you because you just made made a disturbance in the force. So you you are the one with, with the problem, not 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 the users. And whenever I was telling you that all this all those uh, events, all those uh, operations are, are stored, stored in, inside the chain, you could probably uh, see in your mind the event sourcing technique. And as I like to say. The blockchain is an event sourcing on steroids because it is not only able to restore the system at any given point in time from, from the operations that were stored in, inside the chain, it is also able to, 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 do, to, to do so with, with a man, manner that, is, that you were able to check the authenticity, validity, that the data wasn't tampered with, all those properties that I have, that I, I have described at, at the beginning. So the blockchain is simply uh, even sourcing on, on, on steroids. And also the last thing is that I have barely scratched a surface here. For every slide that you have, you have here uh, seen on, on this presentation, I could really create a, a new one from that single slide because the amount of the research that, that goes inside, inside blockchain, there is so much money in, in, this, this, in this industry that simply people are creating new and newer solution each day. And as I said, that if you close your eyes and think about some company, someone is doing something with blockchain right, right now, right, right here, right now. Are there any questions about all those things? I hope that uh, the technical problems di didn't uh, take much from, 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 from the rhetorical way of my presentation. So are there any questions? I have the box I'm eager to throw at you. Uh, you work at the uh, Forex company, right? IFX? No, I don't work as a, on the Forex company. I want to work as a company that, that works in the financial industry and in the fintech specifically. Okay, so, so, so what is your uh, company exactly doing with the blockchain? I mean, we aren't doing uh, much with the blockchain per se, but uh, we are considering blockchain for uh, one of our, our, our applications uh, for the immutable ledger with all, all those guarantees. So we, we just want to, tr we, we are considering tracking all the uh, cash movements, all the, uh, the funds flowing throughout the system inside the, the structure that will resemble, resemble the blockchain. Sorry, can't tell you more. <laughs> Anyone else? OK. If there are no questions that I am, of course, available throughout the day, just please come to me and ask, ask a question. I, I will be very happy to, to answer. Here you have some uh, resources that, that I encourage you to read. Of course, the slides will be published. I will, I will tweet about it or, and put it in, in, in a, on a joined in. Please rate the talk on joined in because uh, PHPC has its own entry on the, on the joined in. And thank you very much.